Hello everyone, I'm Conquering History Games and welcome to the next progress report for Kaiserreich. Today we're going to be looking at progress report 74, the Shanghai Conference. Please remember to go back and check out, I think it was Minor Monday Report 21, because uh, that has important background information for explaining uh, where we are here. But just to review, this is the situation as we're in early 1928, and uh, again, go back to the Minor Monday Report to uh to to understand what alliances were being formed so in early 1928 Zheng Ji here declares war on the the Zili uh, the Zili clique saying that it is an illegitimate national government now the original idea here was that this attack would be a sudden surprise uh and uh the 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 Zheng Ji would be able to quickly uh, cut some of the rail lines however German intelligence has already broken the Japanese encryption, uh, and so they've been listening in and reading what uh, what uh, Feng Tian, Japan, Shangxi, and the others have been up to, uh, at least since 1925. Um, and because of this, we're actually going to jump ahead to a different thing. So, so like this was the original plan, right? Shangxi was going to attack from the west, cut the rail lines. Uh, the dog meat general was going to cut the rail lines here and here, just by his presence alone. Uh, and then with the north part of the clique isolated, the Feng Tian can come in south and uh, defeat the forces around uh, Sing, uh, Tianjin and uh, Beijing and uh, then force uh, uh, negotiations for national unification under a Feng Tian government. But this does not go as planned. This is what actually ends up happening. In the West, because of German intelligence, the clique is able to rapidly defeat the Shangji forces, uh, so the rail lines never get cut over here, like they did in 1924. In the East, uh, Zeng, uh, Zeng Zongchang cannot move, because the Germans are in control of his supply lines. And then in the Southwest, although you can't really see it on this map, uh, Tang Ji Yao and the Yunis get stuck in the mountains and plateaus. Uh, anybody who's fought in Southwest China, you know what I'm talking about, how it's just so nasty down there, so they can't advance either. And so what was supposed to be an encirclement of the clique, of the of the Zhili clique, uh, using the element of surprise, uh, has now failed, and so the, uh, the Feng Tian uh, have no reasonable way of attacking South, uh, and they can't, and, and Zheng Zhulin knows he cannot win. <laughs> However, Japan continues to escalate the war, and soon you have Japanese divisions who are just wearing Chinese uniforms fighting here in the north. So then Germany begins to escalate as well, and they start sending pilots uh, to fight in the war. So that's the situation that's going on until we have the Jade Wind Incident. So without going into too much detail about it, uh, there's an incident in uh, Shanghai, and remember, by the way, some people have been asking, I, I try to link in the description the progress reports and Minor Monday, so if you want to go read every single word, you can do that. I just try to summarize things here and make things easier for people to understand. Okay, so, Jade Wind incident. Uh, outside of Shanghai, a train car full of foreigners is seized. It's called the Jade Wind. And, uh, now you got to remember that the Germans, they've bro again, they've 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 broken through the Japanese encryptions, so they feel that they know everything the Japanese are going to do before they do it. However, they could not have anticipated that some of the Japanese military would act without orders from Tokyo, and this Japanese military proceeds to surround Shanghai, um, saying th that they want to rescue these Jade Wind passengers, and so now you've literally got German and Japanese soldiers shooting at each other outside of Shanghai. And the situation is rapidly escalating in just a couple of days, and it looks like it's gonna spiral out of control. So then Tokyo, Nanjing, and uh, Berlin are all trying to diplomatically figure out a way to stop this before it gets out of hand. And this is when the United States of America jumps in and offers to negotiate, uh, uh, you know, mediate the situation. So a ceasefire in this war is called, but only around Shanghai. Everything else here is still going on. Um, now, the, the, there's a conference called to determine what to do here, and an interesting incident happens because Germany and Japan are actually in agreement in that they do not want Canada at this conference because they claim there is no responsible British government. Remember, in the timeline, 
three years earlier, uh, the royal family has had to flee to Canada. Um, and then Quentin Roosevelt, you know, Teddy Roosevelt's youngest son, he ends up mediating this and says, okay, we're going to let the Canadians come in, but they'll just be observers. They won't actually participate. So the way the Shanghai conference ends up going down is uh, that the open door uh, style of dealing with China where everybody can trade equally with them is restructured. Uh, and it, it's essentially continuing but modified. Uh, Germany doesn't want a big war. So they want peace. They want they want Chinese. They want German influence in China, but they don't want to actually you know a huge war over it if they could avoid it. Um, mission creep and whatnot. Japan doesn't want to end up getting isolated internationally, and the United States basically wants the status quo where they can continue to have a presence in China, but they don't want to. Again, they also don't want a big war because they know that the American public's not going to be very happy about that. So this is the when the legation cities that we know of are established, which are basically an expansion of the international settlement that had been uh, down here in Shanghai. So the way these these uh, settlements is going to work, it's kind of like the inter the cities, I should say, is going to work. It's similar to the international settlement, but there's also a buffer zone created around all of these cities that Chinese soldiers cannot enter while being armed. And the idea is that uh, with these legation cities ruling Tianjin and Shanghai, the warlords are not going to be able to have them to fight over, and it's going to settle down these wars in general. Um, and shortly after this conference, uh, there is uh, there's more negotiations, more conferences called, and a truce is signed between uh, the Zuli clique and the people attacking it. Yunnan to the southwest and Shangji both acknowledge the Zuli clique as a, a the, as the Qing is the legitimate government of China uh, under the Jade Marshal for at least two years, which we talked about before. Uh, Feng Tian does not recognize them as the as the legitimate government of China, but they do sign the truce, and so uh, so you have these two competing. Uh, you still have these two competing uh, nations, effectively or cliques, whatever you want to call them, uh, who are each claiming to be China's legitimate government, but they're at peace now, and that peace is going to hold. Uh, from 1928 onwards, uh, and then in the next progress report, we're going to talk about an incident that happens in 1932. Uh, and then in future reports, it's going to talk about things that happened in the intervening years. But with that in mind, this 1926 to 1928 warlord war period is effectively over, and we can now begin to move on in the timeline. Uh, so I hope that this uh, these guides continue to be helpful to you. These uh, summations of the progress reports. Uh, I'm Conquering History Games. Please subscribe if you have not already. Click the bell so you're always notified whenever a new video such as this one goes up. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. I hope you guys find this interesting. I sure do. Bye.